air insulated substations use air as an insulating medium and incorporate uninsulated, i.e. bare, metallic conductors to connect the equipments together. Because the conductors have no insulation, the electricity will jump from the conductor to any object that approaches them. Here's a typical bare conductor. Once the object gets to within a certain distance of the live conductor, it will break down the air, an arc will be formed, and the object will become live. Here are some typical arcing distances. As you can see, as the system voltage increases, the electrical arcing distance in air also increases. At 69,000 volts or 69 kV, the electrical arcing distance in air is 172 mm. When we go up to 400,000 volts or 400 kV, the electrical arcing distance is over a meter. The higher the voltage applied to the conductor, the farther the electricity will jump through the air. The distance that the electricity can jump is called the arcing distance. The arcing distances depend on the weather. When it's raining or humid, the electricity can use the moisture to break down the air more easily. The electrical system operators know the worst case arcing distances and use this information to set safe minimum distances from live equipment, which increase as the system voltage increases. These are called safety clearances. For clearances inside air insulated substations, the main aim is to keep personnel and equipment safe. To do this, we need to make some assumptions on the typical reach of the human body. For a person standing on the ground, we assume that the maximum height they can reach is 2.4 meters. When they stretch their arms out, we assume that the maximum distance from hand to hand is 2.1 meters. We then add the arcing distances from the previous table to these distances, and then add a suitable safety margin. Let's now look at a typical utilities table of electrical clearances. As you would expect, as the system voltage increases, all of the electrical clearance distances also increase. In the first two columns, we have the minimum phase to ground clearance and the minimum phase to phase clearance. These are purely design clearances and are used to define the minimum distances between the electrical equipment. The next column is the minimum insulation height, which is the distance to the bottom of the insulator. This is based on the 2.4 meter reach of a typical person. In the final column, we have the safe working clearance, sometimes called the sectional clearance. This is used to define safe working distances to the work areas that we need inside the substation to do maintenance on equipment. Let's now see how all these safety clearances are used to design an air insulated substation. In my career, the main clearance infringements in air insulated substations has come from personnel accidentally infringing the clearances by carrying equipment inside the substation, such as metal ladders or scaffolding poles. For this reason, most electrical utilities ban metal ladders inside substations and insist that wooden ladders must be used. They also have special restrictions when scaffolding is used.